I was told before I sat down with my next guest uh, that he was going to be the best interview of the week because he is a fantastic talker. And Bill's linebacker, Lorenzo Alexander, did not disappoint. To set the scene for you, Thursday is throngs of people around Radio Row, Mall of America, the the mad crush of bodies getting thicker and thicker. And it was really hard to even get through the crowds to get to Radio Row. A, a din all around, lots of people taking pictures. Every now and then a bunch of Eagles or Vikings chants breaking out. There was really no place to go, no room to move. And somehow in that sea of people, Lorenzo made it over to our CBS Sports Radio set. And I started out by asking him about the mad crush of people and, and just commenting on the fact that he actually made it to where we were. It's crazy. And it's, it's a little bit of mayhem out here. You obviously have fans from across the league out here, you know, just flying just for Super Bowl week. And they really get a, a chance to be up and close to uh, a lot of football players, a lot of celebrities coming in and out. Obviously, everybody's grabbing guys uh, <laughs> and ladies for, for interviews. So it was just kind of crazy. And since I've kind of, you know, uh, escalated my career late here now it, it, it gets kind of wild sometimes trying to walk through and people want to get autographs and kids want to take pictures but it's fun though right yeah. you get to interact with the fans and be up and close with them ever since i heard we were going to talk to you lorenzo i couldn't wait to ask you about the bills making the playoffs <laughs> specifically right. that locker room scene as you guys right. are watching the ravens and the Bengals on tv and the rest of the world is watching too right, the yeah. most improbable touchdown take me back to the locker room scene what was it like i mean it was just so intense i mean because we we had done everything we could possibly do to put ourselves in a position uh to make the playoffs but it still was out of our hands and i i think if you talk to any football player they don't like to deal with things that they can't control so everybody's rushing into the locker room let's turn the game on and we all sitting there like little kids you know listening to the radio back in the day watching it and just you know kind of going up and down um just with the emotions of the game obviously the first three plays of that series before he, before Andy Dalton throws a touchdown they're all negative plays like oh this is not going to happen it's about to be year 18 we're not going to make it and then this miraculous play comes out scores and then it's but wait it's still 56 seconds. They can still go down. You know, <laughs> Flacco can do it. And then, obviously, Cincinnati's defense steps up, gets that sack. They're off the field, and the, and the, and the locker room erupts. I think the whole entire Bill Mafia around the world erupts. And it's just kind of cool to share that, especially with a guy like Kyle Williams. Mm. You know, been in the league 12 years, professional, all-pro, Pro Bowl caliber player. And for him never to make the playoffs until that moment was very special. Had his two sons in yes. there. Was able to enjoy that, and I've gotten really close to Kyle. So to see that, that emotion, just all that hard work finally come and pay off to get to the dance was awesome. And then not to talk about, you know, Bill's Mafia. I mean, you see the videos, people crying, cheering, hugging each other, uh, you know, all the videos people sending in because Bill's Mafia and the Buffalo Bills, are some, they're one and the same. I mean, that community really supports our football franchise. I mean, people are bred about that. I was talking about it earlier. In school, my kids go to school up there, okay. and every Friday – they sing the Let's Go Buffalo song. And I've been in every market, grew up in Oakland, California. Yeah. Other I've never experienced anything like that. I said, man, <laughs> this stuff is like a cult. You have no choice. No wonder they're so passionate up here. That's awesome. I had a chance to run into Steve Tasker, of course, oh, longtime Bill, went to four guy. Super Bowls uh, yesterday. And he said he feels like that game and, and the getting into the playoffs ensured that there would be another generation of Bills fans. And I know you've only been there. You were only there a couple of seasons. <laughs> right. You talk about your kids, though. But the fact that they hadn't seen a playoff game in, like, this generation, yeah. and that kind of solidifies you have to be a Bills fan. Yeah, I mean, and it's just show, I mean, you have to win to keep your fans happy and stuff. I mean, and, and he's right about that because that – you know, at some point, you know, mom and dad saw the four champion uh, championship or Super Bowl appearances, mm -hmm. but their kids hadn't seen anything. <laughs> no Super Bowls, no playoffs. And you start looking around the league, especially in this day and age with social media and just how easy it is to kind of venture off. Mm, them Patriots look kind of nice or the Eagles look kind of nice. You know, whoever you want to, you know, kind of root for. So for us to finally kind of bring or I guess re-energize our fan base was really special and really give them something because they deserve it. I mean, our fans sure. are special. Jumping off of, of tops of buses and – Naked half the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they just have a good time. It's a college <laughs> atmosphere. And, I mean, they've supported us through this entire time, and they're really passionate, obviously, shown, but also very knowledgeable about the game and very embracing us in the community. And I've, and I've experienced all that just in my short two years there. Mm. 
uh, linebacker Lorenzo Alexander of the Buffalo Bills this season with us here after hours on CBS Sports Radio. How much harder is it now, though? You, you say being old, I mean, old, but like for an athlete at, yeah, at mid-30s, right. right? So yeah. how much harder is it to get mentally and physically ready to get through a season? Um, it's not hard for me at all because it's, it's all about um, – just the process and being through it. Just like Tom Brady this week. What is this? Is his seventh uh, Super Bowl appearance? Eight. 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 I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> so he understands how to get through that week uh, more efficiently. I'm the same way with my offseason regimen and how I plan and yeah. how I have things scheduled and how to get through the season, how to take care of my body. So it takes me less, less effort to maintain, uh, I guess, peak condition to go out there and play. So that just comes from a lot of years of playing, mm. being around a lot of great players like London Fletcher, Larry Fitzgerald, a lot of great coaches um, that have really poured into me and allowed me to still be able to continue to play at year 14. In 2016, you had you were first year with Buffalo. Right. You had this career year, 12 and a half sacks. Yeah. What was it about Buffalo that kind of rejuvenated you and your career and, and that yeah. system? And well, it's Rex Ryan really liking me as a player and giving me the opportunity to play. You know, I've been in this league, you know, a long time, mainly as a special teams ace and a backup linebacker. And really had to have the opportunity. I think like a lot of talented players in this league, you just kind of get relegated to a certain role. And in 2016, my role shifted to a starter. Had a lot of opportunity to rush the passer, um, put up stats, and, and was able to do it. And that's all guys need sometimes, just a little bit of a leash to go out there, be able to know they can play free, maybe make a mistake here and there, but know they can find the rhythm within the game and go out there and make plays. And I was able to sustain that, stay healthy, sure. and uh, make plays throughout the entire season. Then there's a coaching change. Right. What's special about Sean McDermott? Um, what's special about Sean? I think his attention to detail, very organized, um, has a clear vision and plan of what he wants his team to look like. But most importantly, he's able to communicate that. I think that's what a great head coach has to be able to do, to communicate that to his players, to get them to buy in um, wholeheartedly um, from top to bottom. And um, he's done that. And we just want to continue to build on that foundation that we started this year. And, you know, it's always hard to do this, but take some of that momentum we had in 2017 and catapult that to the next <laughs> next year, you know, bring in some, probably bring in some more guys and get them guys caught up and so we can actually win a playoff game and hopefully be playing in this game because I don't have too many seasons left. <laughs> I don't plan on playing for a different team, so I, I need to get to a Super Bowl. I'd heard about Sean McDermott that he – He's not just one of those guys who says we want a specific player in the locker room. Yeah. We want a specific culture. Right. He actually is prepared to make the tough decisions to get it to be that way. Right. So how would you describe your, your locker room with the Bills? Um, it's great. I think Sean and Brandon have done a great job of bringing in guys that can play football but that are high character. Oftentimes you hear coaches, you know, we care about character, trust, respect, accountability, but then you have guys that – are ultra talented, but they fail in that aspect of, of their life um, for whatever reason, and they keep those guys. So it's like, what are you saying? And then you have a guy that does everything right, is productive, and then you let him go. So okay. where is that, uh, what are you saying? And so far what I've seen Sean and Brandon have done has it, really been true to their word that they want guys that only can play football, but they want great human beings as far as how you live your life, you know, with your family, your kids. Um, in the community? Are you accountable to this football team? Are you doing all the little things that make you a pro um, so you can add to this team and we don't have to waste energy trying to deal with your antics or try to force you to become and do something that you said you, this is your dream? Um, and, and I've been very pleased with the guys. And guys that I think about are like Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, um, guys that we've brought in from other teams that have really added to that and are constant pros and really had productive seasons this year and had breakout years. So it's been, it's been great to see guys come in and flourish like I did under this, uh, under this new system. Bills linebacker Lorenzo Alexander with us here on Radio Row. You were the team's 2017 Walter Payton Man of the yeah. Year Award nominee. What does that mean to you? Um, it's, 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 it's truly a blessing, um, you know, to be honored by your teammates because you, you, the t your, your guys – are the ones that vote for whoever the recipient is. And we have guys like Jerry Jerry Hughes, Eric Wood, uh, Preston Brown, um, Kyle Williams, guys that, you know, that could be voted for it every, every single year. And for me to be, I guess, kind of set on a pedestal, uh, you know, above those guys because they voted for me, it's really humbling and a blessing. And it just makes, I, it, for me, I take a responsibility that I have to uphold this because the men I just mentioned, are great men and doing some things at a, at a high rate in our communities. And I just want to continue to be able to live that out every single day 
um, and just continue to inspire my teammates uh, to be active in the community and as well as helping out people in our communities. So as we uh, wrap up here, what are some of the initiatives, some of the passions that you have in the community, some of the ways that you like to help out? Well, yeah, I kind of, <laughs> my wife gets me on this because I spread myself. I'm a giver, you know, so I'm involved in a lot of different things just because <laughs> I've been in, impacted by things throughout my uh, years. You know, I grew up in a in a family that was infected by uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So I work with the American Diabetes Association and that, that's a natural fit to work with the Kidney Foundation. <laughs> um, you know, Play 60, I think recess is so important in school. So I work with uh, Play 60, with it's an NFL initiative yeah. and also Playworks. That's another organization based out of Oakland that does the same thing. And then as well, I have my own organization, you know, the ACES Foundation. And um, we do a lot of work as far as standing in the gap um, and meeting the needs that kids need that are in low income areas because every kid has great ability and um, a great spirit inside of them. Some kids are just blessed with more resources. Mm -hmm. So the kids that, that lack in that area, I try to fill it, whether it's back to school, um, giveaways, Christmas stuff, um, doing mentoring programs, um, academic initiatives, just to help fill that void where some of those communities lack so that all of our kids have the same access and it's all about eventually going to college, becoming successful, and then creating that cycle again uh, and going back into your communities. And that's what I love to do. It keeps you with a healthy perspective, doesn't it? You remember this is always, what it's worth. Always. Because I, <laughs> I was one of those kids uh, at, at some point in my life, and I had somebody speaking to my life and really fill that gap. I tell people, you know, since then, me and my father had a great relationship. But when I was younger, he wasn't there. And my uncle stood in, in that gap for him mm -hmm. until he was ready for that. And without my uncle... I would not be here today. You know, I probably wouldn't have the same relationship with my father because it would be filled with resentment. Mm -hmm. So I try to fill in that gap to maintain relationships, but then also allow kids to become successful and achieve their dreams. Lorenzo, someone with the Bills organization told me it would be the best interview we'd have all week. Thank you so much for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Really exciting to hear your story about the playoffs, but also the big picture of what else you're doing in, the, in Western New York. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>